Are you with the art right? If you with the art right, get from me my twenty Get away from here. Get away from here. Get away from here. You're very inclusive. I'm looking to learn about inclusion, guys. I'm just looking to learn about inclusion and diversity. I'm here to learn about multiculturalism, and I'm here to learn about how how diverse groups lead to very high trust societies. All right, here you go. The full on demonstration. Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Don't trample people. Don't trample people. Go, 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 What is good, my people? We are live back again with another episode of The Forecast. Now, I know everybody has seen what has happened in Charlottesville at this white nationalist rally and the other mostly white people who came out to oppose them. The alt-right is behind these attacks, and he linked that same group to those who perpetrated the attack in Charlottesville. Well, I, I don't know. I can't tell you. I'm sure Senator McCain must know what he's talking about. Uh, but when you say the alt-right, uh, define alt-right to me. You define it. Go ahead. Well, I'm saying, as no, Senator, define it for me. Come on. Let's go. Define Senator it. McCain defined them as the same group. Okay, what about the alt-left that came McCain. charging him? Excuse me. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? This is sorry, sorry. What, let, let me ask you this. What about the fact they came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. Sorry. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. That was a horrible day. I will tell you something. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. And you have, uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. You had a group, you had a group on the other side that came charging in without a permit, and they were very, very violent. Now, as someone who is from Richmond, Virginia, I have seen this for a very long time. You see plenty of people still wearing the Confederate flag everywhere in my city. Now, I've been to Charlottesville before, and I can tell you as a black man, once you start going past places like Charlottesville towards, you know, the county areas, the further out you go, as a black man, you do not want to get caught slipping out there. You do not want to wind up catching a flat tire on the side of the road out there. In fact, when I'm coming back to Richmond, I wouldn't even stop to use the bathroom or anything until I got to Charlottesville. Now, events like this only highlights yet again the hypocrisy that these people have. Here you have somebody commit an actual act of terrorism. And while there are some that even condone it. So if we look at the footage by Brandon Gilmore, we can see something interesting. I read on departmentofmemes.com the following assumption that the driver's car was hit with a baseball bat. And I don't know if it is a baseball bat, but we can see somebody hitting the car at this very moment. 
and I put the video in slow motion and I also zoomed in on the footage and um, it's really not sure what is there uh, used to uh, hit the car and if the person really hits the car. It could be a baseball bat, it could be a jacket, but we see a person who is moving like he is intended on hitting the car. And this could have caused the person driving the car to be uh, getting um, fearful and then accelerating without thinking. Many of them are saying, well, you know, we can't condemn a whole movement based off of one person or one group's actions. Yet that is all they do with Black Lives Matter because some group that you don't even know if it was the actual Black Lives Matter protesters or what chanted pigs in a blanket or whatever they chanted. Now the whole Black Lives Matter organization is terrorist. Or when those four teenagers kidnapped a white man because he was a Trump supporter and beat him up, you automatically label them Black Lives Matter. But do those kids look like some damn activists to you? I don't think most black people is actively involved in the Black Lives Matter organization. We, we agree with the phrase Black Lives Matter, but it does not matter what you do. They all put you into one group. If somebody does something in Chicago, obviously all black people across America are horrible people. Yet some crazy dude drives through a crowd of people after he was chanting with the other people who believe what he believed, yet he is a lone wolf still. Or like Dylan Roof who goes into a church and shoots nine people while they're praying. And I don't remember the police being too rough with him, by the way. And all of these people who is getting tough on crime and cracking down on crime will not call a spade a spade has not said anybody is going to get punished yet. And if you think these ain't some of the same people in the police department who are joining these police forces, then you are crazy or super misinformed. But the thing is, when we protest, we go out and say, please stop shooting us. Please treat us fairly, very kindly, very forgiving. And when they go out and protest, they're protesting them not having superiority over everybody else. They protest in the fact that they are losing their power of control, of, of dominance. And bodies get caught at these fucking rallies. People get punched in the face. Fights happen. People get pissed on on them. It's just kind of weird to me that it really should be the other way around. Why don't the people who are being oppressed have the same passion as the people who are in a dominant position and fighting to keep themselves in the dominant position. And that's one thing our people have to learn from them. Not to say you can never be forgiving and peaceful, but everything in life has a balance. If you're always peaceful and forgiving, at some point you're going to be submitting. And in the meantime, while all of this protesting is going on, Colin Kaepernick can't get a job because he protested by sitting down or taking a knee. And now, more than I've ever seen, there are so many black, especially former players, telling Kaepernick, just shut up and do what you're supposed to do. Do what they, these people tell you in the midst of everything that's going on right now. What's your opinion of guys like Michael Bennett uh, and Marshall Lynch sitting down for the national anthem? Um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's all up for uh, to them guys uh, what they want to do with their career, um, their livelihood. You know, what I mean, but you know I mean, it, it's I, I think it's more of you know, what I mean, marketing. It, it's not really in their heart um, that they really want to do that. But once again, I think it's a selfish reason. I really do. What makes you think that? Um, just because of you know, what I mean, it, it, it is the NFL, um, and guys do have a platform. For, for positive reasons. As you can see, um, Kaepernick um, can't find a job for that reason. You know what I mean? So I, I think go out and play football and do what you're supposed to do and not worry about the, the worldly things that's going on. I really think that he's doing it just for attention? I, I do. I do. He's wearing the Afro, the Afro puff. Come on, man. 
cut that off your head or br- braid it up or something. But- Let me ask you this. If the Confederates had lost the war, which they supposedly had, but I'm starting to have questions, because who the hell wins a war but keeps their flag and puts statues up everywhere that's lasted for hundreds of years after the war, directly after the war? But if the Confederates had lost or America had lost to the British Empire, do you think they would be saying to each other, man, just take that Confederate flag off, just take that American flag off and shut up and go play hockey or golf or whatever they play? No, I don't see them doing that. We are the only ones that tell each other, shut up about your black pride, shut up about your history and just conform and get this paycheck and make it better on the rest of us. I don't see any other race of people doing that. I don't see Asians doing that. I don't see white people doing that. But I do see our people doing that. But if there's anything we should take from them is, for one thing, the saying, give me liberty or give me death. We as a people can't worry about what they're doing Because it's been a very long time now. We can't believe the myth of the white savior. There is no white savior. There is no white Jesus. Not one that's going to save us anyway. They say, no, well, we just think the races should be separated. Well, you know what? When the races were separated, black people built an economy. Black people had thriving families. Black people was good. But what did the white separatists do? Say, well, hey, that's no good. We got to go in there and burn that shit down and kill everybody in the city. And then they came talking about integration. But they didn't really want to integrate with us. They just wanted to integrate our economy. They wanted our money. So they funneled the money out of our communities. So now you ain't got no money. And, you know, I'm definitely not going to hire no black man. But I'll tell you what. I'll give the women and the children a place to stay and some food and stuff like that, some health care. But the man got to be out of the house and destroy our families. And by the way, these were the people who were fighting against the racist people. But as long as you got your hope in other people's hands, what do you expect? And this is why I'm glad Trump won, because... Now we realize we have no other choice, and we have to do it quick. We have to build our own nation. We have to be able to protect ourselves and defend ourselves, and we have to be united, and we have to be on the same page around the world globally. And the reason we are in trouble is because these people can agree to come together on a statue of Robert E. Lee, regardless of how you feel about Robert E. Lee. They can come together for their whiteness over the statue. But us, we can't even come together when our children are being murdered in the street, cold-blooded, and nobody is held accountable for it. Nobody pays for it. But they are the ones who are acting with the urgency. And until we respond with a greater urgency than they do, then we're just running on the treadmill. We're working hard and staying in place. We ain't going nowhere. Nothing is going to change. And if we don't start responding with more urgency than they have, then we're just running on the treadmill. Nothing's going to change. We are also learning more tonight about the alleged driver behind that deadly car attack in Charlottesville. 20-year-old James Fields, charged with murder, seen chanting white Sharia now during the rally, making his first court appearance today. Fields working as a security guard, and tonight you will hear from those who know him, including his own mother, who said she thought he was going to a Trump rally. Here's ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas tonight. You will not replace us. Those chilling images white supremacist marchers bearing torches on the campus of the University of Virginia. The next morning, they gather again, former KKK leader David Duke among them. We are determined to take our country back. We're going to fulfill the promises of Donald Trump. James Alex Fields Jr., after driving in from Ohio, seen among the white supremacists. Chanting for white power, shortly before authorities believe 
he got in this car, launching that fatal attack that left Heather Heyer dead. Tonight, the suspected killer is behind bars, held without bail, and charged with murder. Back home, his mother's saying she didn't know who would be at the rally. I didn't know it was white supremacists. I thought it had something to do with Trump. Trump's not a supremacist. But tonight, a chilling portrait of the suspect from those who knew him, including his high school teacher. He felt that, you know, whites were superior. He felt that the views that Adolf Hitler espoused were correct in some way. And classmates say during a trip to Germany, Fields shocked them as they were walking through a concentration camp, allegedly saying this is where the magic happened. He was vocal about his ideas. He proclaimed himself as a Nazi and as a white supremacist. The rally was about white supremacists fighting to keep a Confederate statue from being removed. And today, many of whom marched openly are being targeted for shaming online. One of the protesters reportedly losing his job. Another saying he's not an angry racist. I gained this march trying to the message that white European culture has the right to be here just like every other culture. And Pierre Thomas joins us live tonight from the Justice Department. And Pierre, I asked Attorney General Jeff Sessions today, was this domestic terrorism? He indicated it does meet the criteria, but that there would be further investigation. And tonight you've learned he's also looking into whether this is a civil rights violation. David, they're investigating to see if the murder was a hate crime or domestic terrorism. And the FBI is trying to find out whether Fields is a member of a hate group or if he was directed to attack. in those counter protests, including a man from Suffolk. We want to warn you, the video of the attack may be difficult for some of our viewers. Yeah, 10 on your side, Brandy Cummings is here with that story. Brandy, uh, what is this man saying? Well, Laura Stephanie, the man is saying he is alive all thanks to a stranger that was there that day. DeAndre Harris once lived in Suffolk but moved to Charlottesville a couple years ago. His family still here in Hampton Roads. Harris is now talking about what happened to him over the weekend. And for the first time today, we can show it to you. The video is graphic and lasts less than a minute. It starts with a man on the ground. He gets up, but is pushed back down, then kicked and beaten by several men. As he tries to get up again, he's beaten. Then finally, the crowd stops, struggling to maintain his balance with a bloody face. The man, now identified as DeAndre Harris, eventually runs off. His injuries are extensive. And I had to get eight staples in my head to seal it back up. Uh, I broke my wrist. Right here, uh, I busted my lip, I tipped my tooth. The entire scene captured Saturday by the Washington, D.C. based The Daily Caller News Foundation. Harris was just one of more than 30 people injured during the chaotic clashes in Charlottesville over the weekend. I was losing so much blood, like the people at the hospital told me I was lucky. Lucky indeed. Three others died. 32 year old Heather Heyer was killed after a car plowed into a group of counter protesters who clashed with white nationalists who were in town protesting the removal of a Confederate statue. Two troopers died in a helicopter crash while helping patrol the area. Harris says he's alive, all thanks to a stranger. He only knows her as Karen. She talked to me and kept me calm and, and really kept me awake. I was fanning and she waked me up. And a day after that attack, Harris started an online account to raise money for medical bills. He collected more than $100,000 in just 24 hours, but is no longer accepting donations. George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now, are we going to take down his statue? So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis, 
and white nationalists, okay? As Baltimore mayor is talking about the removal of monuments to Confederate icons that happened overnight. Four monuments were taken down. Uh, barely two days after the city council voted to remove them because or following the violence in Charlottesville. Joining me now to talk about the history here, you know, President Trump asked a key question, you know, if you take down statues of Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, should George Washington, Thomas Jefferson be next? I'm here with James Grossman, Executive Director of the American Historical Association, and Larry Sabato, Director of the Center for Politics at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. You know, and James, the president made a fairly direct, hardly even implicit comparison between Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee, and George Washington. Historically speaking, is that apt? No, it's a specious comparison. Uh, yes, uh, these were all slaveholders, and in that sense, Washington and Jefferson were deeply flawed individuals. Uh, Washington and Jefferson, however, participated in the creation of a, of a country. Uh, in a democratic experiment. Uh, Jefferson has other aspects to his life that are worth honoring. Uh, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be critical of them for being slaveholders. Uh, Lee and Jackson, however, have been honored for one thing, which is the attempt to create and then defend uh, a new nation uh, that existed for one reason, which was to protect the rights of some individuals to own other individuals. It's there in the declarations of secession. It's very straightforward. Yeah, I mean, you know, to be clear, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, you know, created a union. Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson fought to leave that union, our union. Uh, Professor Sabato, you are at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, obviously the site of these demonstrations, but also, you know, in Virginia, of course, which, you know, the, the key state of the Confederacy. And this is not a new debate about Confederate monuments. And, and people always point to the heritage. There is history here. This is something that people have struggled with, you know, in Virginia for a long time. Well, of course it is, and I'm at the university founded by Thomas Jefferson. I live in a building on the lawn where I witnessed the outrage of the neo-Nazis last Friday night in a, a building designed by Thomas Jefferson. How do we deal with this complicated legacy? We honor, as Mr. Grossman suggested, Thomas Jefferson's tremendous accomplishments, author of the Declaration of Independence, founder of the university, author of the Declaration of Religious Freedom, uh, the Louisiana Purchase, we could go on and on. I think that balances in some way the unfortunate part of his uh, legacy about slavery. We certainly do not support that. But John, we're, we're building a monument to enslaved laborers right here. Uh, we have a dormitory named after enslaved laborers. We're doing things that matter. Mm -hmm. But this is more false equivalency from President Trump. Just as he falsely equated the neo-Nazis with those showing up to protest their fascism. So too is he trying to uh, make equivalent Robert E. Lee with Thomas Jefferson or George Washington. And as Mr. Grossman has just explained, it is outrageous it, and wrong. Tonight with exclusive images of a Houston woman forced to endure a body cavity search in public and demanding accountability. The incident resulted in the criminal indictment of two Harris County deputies, charges that have since been quietly dropped. Our Greg Grugan has the only on Fox story tonight. If the images captured by dash cam video accurately portrayed the ordeal endured by Sharnisha Corley, many in the community will seriously question why two Harris County deputies have been cleared of criminal charges and a third never charged at all. It's now been two years since a traffic stop triggered what Corley's attorney calls sexual assault by police. 21 year old African American female, college student, had never had any criminal history, never been in trouble. Still images obtained by Fox 26 show Corley in cuffs while deputies search her car. One of the officers on the tape, you could hear him talking to the passenger that was already in custody in the officer's car. You could hear him telling that individual, oh, we're going to find something if we have to put our hands on her. And they did. After a search of Corley's clothing turned up nothing, deputies decided to take their hunt deeper. This same officer body slammed Miss Corley, stuck her, uh, her head underneath the vehicle and completely pulled her pants off, leaving her naked and exposed in that Texaco parking lot. Attorney Sam Kamak says what happened next amounts to rape by cop. They then 
took Miss Corley and put her ankles behind her ears, both of her ankles, in a spread eagle position and began to search for something in Miss Corley's cavity in her vaginal area. And according to the video, which Fox 26 has fully reviewed, the probing went on for at least 11 excruciating minutes before Corley was allowed to emerge from beneath the car and cover her naked body. We asked Harris County Prosecutor Natasha Sinclair if cavity searching suspects in public constitutes a criminal offense. No one in this office stands by the search the way it was conducted. No one condones that. No one thinks it's appropriate. It should not have happened. However, bad decisions, bad judgment may not rise to the level of criminal offense. Fox 26 has learned charges were dismissed against the deputies on August 4th, the very day the case was set for trial, and within minutes rapidly represented to a grand jury with what the DA's office calls new evidence evidence which must remain secret. There has been no new factual evidence to support dismissal of the case. I feel terrible for what happened to Ms. Corley. It should never have happened. Unfortunately, we're in the business of prosecuting criminal offenses. And though it may not be criminal, that doesn't mean that she won't receive justice. The deputies involved remain on the force and may soon be released from administrative duty. CAMAC will release the full video on Monday and is calling for an independent prosecutor, one that does not work for Harris County, which is being sued by Corley in federal court for violation of her civil rights.